Hi, and welcome to another episode of Content Marketing and, and today we're going to be discussing content marketing and Arnold Palmer. Um, you'll notice a trend here, movies and golf, two of my favorite things. I'm going to constantly relate back to them. Um, but um, the other day I was actually watching, it was a repeat of a documentary on Arnold Palmer um, named Arnie, a three-part documentary series on the Golf Channel. And... Um, and it was just all about Arnie, who he was as a person, um, his personal life, and then his business as well. Um, and it really started getting me thinking about the Arnold Palmer brand and what he's managed to achieve over many years. Um, you know, the man's been retired from golf for the past, like, you know, 10, 15 years. And even before that, he wasn't relevant in terms of winning PGA championships for the past 30 plus years. So, but his brand is as strong as it is today. And even on earnings potential, um, he is still earning more if you take into consideration, um, obviously, sponsorships and his business. He's still earning more than the majority of the golfers out there, you know, $30, $50 million plus a year just because of how successful his business is. And that was all because of a brand that he created. So that's kind of what I'm going to get into today. So let's first off talk about Arnold Palmer. I'm not sure if everyone here is a major golf fan, um, but even if not, you've heard of Arnold Palmer and you've heard of the brand. Um, that's the first thing to remember is you might not know his golf accolades too much um, or even him as a golfer, but everybody knows the brand. Um, but Arnold Palmer essentially, um, 50s, 60s, 70s, he was very relevant, one of the best golfers in the world. Um, for a time, easily the best golfer in the world. What's important to realize, and he was called the king, um, what's important to realize was his popularity was immense. Um, you know, we talk about, you know, in the early 2000s, the popularity of Tiger Woods in the game. It was actually nothing compared to how popular Arnold Palmer really was um, back when he was playing. So it's, um, that's just something that's important to remember. Um, and what he started doing, and obviously this is well before social media and it wasn't anything he was doing on purpose, was his personal brand was incredibly strong. He was easily, you know, one of, if not the best golfer of his time. Um, but he was also, without a doubt, nobody would question this, the most popular player of all time. Um, you know, way more popular than Jack Nicholas, who was a better golfer, um, Gary Player, and then going to modern golfers, Greg Norman, Tiger Woods, Jordan Spieth, they, nothing compared to the popularity of Arnold Palmer. Now, why was he so popular? Obviously, him winning was part of it, but there was, like I told you, there was other golfers like Jack Nicholas who was winning a lot more consistent, but why was he so popular? Um, there's numerous stories um, about Arnold Palmer, about how kind he was to his fans. He always took his time to engage any fan who would talk to him, as many signatures as you know, autographs as possible he could do, at as many as appearances, and he was always just nice and kind to everybody. Um, so before he actually went into business, became it, he'd already developed such an, impo an important um, repertoire with his fans, and everybody knew him as this just genuinely nice guy. Um, had a lot of you know strong values about him, and that was always relayed um, when he won golf tournaments and even when he didn't win it. Um, so that brand was kind of you know being built up over time, and he became so popular that he started developing what's called like Arnie's Army, which was a if you if you are familiar with golf, that's a very popular thing to say. Um, which essentially people would just follow him around the golf course at an even higher level than Tiger Woods. Just everyone cheered for him, and the reason why it wasn't just how nice he was, it was also the story behind. Um, Arnold Palmer. He was, um, you know, very much just like your average citizen, middle, lower class family. Um, so all the, you know, regular Joes of golf, not just the highbrow, were like cheering for him. You know, ever all the uh, blue collar workers were big fans behind Arnie. So he got this huge fan base. Um, and what happened as a result is um, when they start to look about, you know, him going into business and product endorsements, um, he signed with an agent called Mark McCormick, um, who is an IMG actually here in Cleveland. That's actually where Arnold Palmer's company currently um, um, resides, is downtown Cleveland. Um, he started to see the real potential in the Arnold Palmer brand, not just the person. Um, so there had been other sports uh, marketers to this point, you know, even in golf back in the 30s and 20, 20s and 30s. Golfers were promoting, you know, things like alcohol and cigarettes and things like that. Um, but Arnold Palmer was really kind of the first person to make it on a mat. Like, he was promoting everything from, like, um, motor oil to um, drinks, as people know. And he had some core beliefs from the very beginning um, that he refused to ever um, let up on. Um, and that was that he was never going to do 
uh, product endorsement for a product that he didn't personally believe in um, or did his due diligence on, researched, used himself, um, and, you know, so that he could build that trust and loyalty with the brands that he was um, dealing with. Um, so that genuine personality that he used to have with his fans, he was actually bringing into his business, um, not just his personal brand, but then the Arnold Palmer brand itself as well. And it was built upon those core beliefs that it would always be loyal, it would always be trustworthy, it would always treat people well. This was the Arnold Palmer brand. And it's still incredibly strong today. People know that. Um, just, you know, forget the Arnold Palmer drink, which everybody knows. Um, anything that Arnold Palmer is associated with, people will immediately associate with um, trust, um, will associate with integrity, um, and that all came from the man himself first and then applying that to anything that he did on a business. So everybody he treats, um, everybody he, um, anybody he does business with um, will say instantly that this man was very loyal, very trustworthy, had a lot of integrity. These are the same words that are used over and over and over again. Take, you know, do a little research and actually learn about some of the brands that he's um, worked with. And those words come up time and time and time again. And that's bitten to the core belief of the brand. This is something that's important for you to realize um, when you're developing, forget content marketing, it's any kind of digital marketing strategy, is that your brands are built on core beliefs. And if you don't adhere to those. If you don't, if everybody in your company doesn't adhere to those and have those values, um, people are going to know that you're not being genuine, um, which is why this, you know, company now 40, you know, 40 plus years has been going on. People still associate it with popularity and trust, integrity. I mean, it's on clothes. It's very, he's very big in Japan. There's still almost the um, biggest clothing lines in Japan is the Arnold Palmer brand. And so just the name itself is enough to, um, and get those words started sparking in people's heads, you know, trust, loyalty, integrity. Um, and if you actually see on the website, those are the words that they use to describe their brand. Um, so they've managed to really kind of keep that trend going um, throughout the years. And you have to understand that building a brand is very much a long-term strategy. Um, this brand was started, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, and you can see the GQ magazine on the right is actually a modern one. It was an article about, like, the 25 coolest... Um, sports figures of all time, which Arnold Palmer was one of the top people listed on there, he's still very relevant. You know, and neither of these are golf magazines. You know, these are lifestyle magazines. So that brand of Arnold Palmer being, you know, cool, calm, collected as well, is also relayed here, and that really helps his brand. So if you manage to have some core beliefs and you stick to those, that's going to span well beyond even your industry, um, and people just know what your brand stands for. And think about that with some popular brands today. Think about Red Bull. People I mean, think of extreme sports, you know, going to the max. Um, you know, Coca-Cola would be, you know, open happiness. Um, you know, Amazon, everyone knows, like, the brand behind that. Google, these, these brands have personalities. And you have to think of your brand. It's easy with Arnold Palmer because he was a person. And, you know, he just took his values and put that into the brand of Arnold Palmer. But you have to think of your brand almost as a person. So whenever you're interacting on social media, any interviews you give, anything, you have to relay that that personality of your business out to the public. Um, and it can take years. And if you get a strong enough brand, you know, you can overcome anything. So brand is the most important element um, when it comes to creating your strategy. And you have to think of it as long term. And, you know, one day Arnold Palmer won't be with us. That'll be a sad day for myself. But his brand is still going to go strong. His company will still be strong even without him because that's how much um, time and effort they've put into making sure that their brand has stayed, their brand core values have stayed consistent throughout the years. So I want to leave it with um, this cool uh, quote, you know, if people like you, they will listen to you, but if they trust you, they'll do business with you. And that's what Arnold Palmer was able to achieve. Any new business deals he did, people just knew the man and knew what he stood for. So they would do business with him all day long. So again, think of your brand as a personality, not as a company. And, you know, what is that personality of your company? And make sure that you keep that consistent um, throughout the years and with any interaction you do with anybody, anywhere, anytime. Um, so uh, thank you for indulging me to somehow bring up Arnold Palmer in my web series. Maybe not the last time I'm going to do it. Um, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time, and I will talk to you again next week.